Hawa Shabbata. So how you want to get it in the part number 32 of the investigation of your priest king? How you want to get it? I mean, see, when you're looking for your priest king, when you're looking for Hawashua and Moshe, when you're looking for your Hakan Dawu, who they call King David, right? Solomon, right? When you look for your foundation, man, sometimes it's just right in front of your face ball. I mean, you can get it however you want to get it. You can get it as simple as a little child. Welcome to part 32. And it's a beautiful journey we've been on. Get the drive. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you got to get it like a little child in the investigation of the priest king. Aiden. 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 Woke up to a beautiful sunny day. He checked his calendar. Woohoo! In the summer days, it's the summer days, the holidays. Exclaimed Aiden. Aiden was so happy because his mom promised Aiden could have a pet. Oh, look at Aiden. He wants a pet. He goes to the pet shop. Oh, that's a pretty nice, uh, what's that, Camaro or something? You know what I mean? It's pretty nice. Soon Aiden was hurtling, hurtling towards, hurtling towards the pet. All right. Shop at a great speed. I guess they meant hurling towards the pet shop at a great speed on his bike. Imagining himself with a guinea pig when he reached he looked around for the guinea pigs. There were cages with parrots, mice, rabbits, fish tanks full of tropical fish. And then something caught his eye. He walked up to it. It was an egg. An ice dragon egg. At the pet shop? Well, I wouldn't expect that at the pet shop. What do you know, man? What do you know about this Dragon egg. And where did it come from, Aiden? Sometimes you gotta get it like a little child. He walked up to it. It was an egg, an ice dragon egg. It was light blue and had white stripes and it was bigger than the ostrich egg. He asked the shopkeeper if it's real. Of course, it's a dragon egg. Don't you know that dragons live in either Antarctica or near volcanoes? He chuckled. They're just going to lay out our entire theory of what we're digging on, of Yellowstone and volcanoes and how these volcanoes are dragons' lairs and what's popping really in Antarctica and these polar regions. Yeah, we're digging on the fire-breathing dragons. We're digging on the Drakan. We're digging on your priest king, your dragon kings. And you need to know, I mean, even the shopkeeper in this child book says, of course, it's a dragon egg. Of course, it's real. Don't you know that dragons live in either Antarctica What's going on in Antarctica? And why did Admiral Richard Byrd get his ass kicked with 5,000 men by something they have uh, put under full, you know what I'm saying, full, full secret, you know, whatever that is, you know what I'm saying? Put the, you know, censor the shit, the censor the shit. But now the documents are all popping back up. All the certified, classified, <laughs> full classified documents are coming up, man. So what's happening with Richard Byrd in Antarctica with Operation High Jump, man? Ask the right questions, because what 
happened? Why did they need to take 5,000 men, submarine, tankers to Antarctica? And he actually announced this is a military mission and it was fully funded by the U.S. Navy going to Antarctica. Well, don't you know that dragons live in either Antarctica or near volcanoes, fool? Sometimes you got to get it like a small child. The Boy Who Annoyed the Dragon is the name of the book. Rachel Sukla, Shukla. All right, so you got all these links. All the links I'm going to, you got below. So click on them. Let's go. We don't play play. So remember this. Don't you know that dragons live in either Antarctica or volcanoes? Just, just keep that in front of you. Let's go. We got this on the site before. Antarctica. Rich Dulcich. All right. Maps of the cave world. All right. Okay. The cave world. This is some German drop because, of course, you have the Nazi German uh, Antarctica connection. Right. We all know that. That's been digging on it. Now, I want you to pay attention to these land masses that's popping up on these ancient German maps. You know, one of these is representing Asia, Africa, another is representing the Americas. They both don't look like either one, right? You got the ass card here. And here you got Liberia. Now, you might automatically assume they mean Africa by that. But the original Africa is in America. And they know it. Because they're just talking about the secret places. And when you look at these islands that's connected to. This is Western. This is Western Antarctica. So if this is Western Antarctica. This can't be Africa. If this is Western Antarctica. And we got that video I believe. Uh, was it James Munder that dropped that? Uh, he actually you know. Had the whole thing up and literally called it Western Antarctica. So Western Antarctica can't be in the so-called East, right? So we're talking about the original Liberia. So he's literally being America or South America is literally being called Liberia. You know, surfing the wave. And these might be the islands. Which is connected to Antarctica. The same way we got it before. Okay, South America, this is Antarctica, it's being called Paradise Bay, Paradise Bay, see how close South America is to Antarctica, King George Island, hmm, hmm, King George, huh, Paradise Bay, Paradise Bay, okay, just get my orientation so when I see this popping up in Germany oh man oh we got some work today let's get it so when I see this popping up in Germany and how this is connecting the same way and here it's called Shambhala Shambhala so we dug on Shambhala or Shambhala which is in the, in the four corners, the Cibola, Kalelus. And again, we have these portals or vortexes that seem to connect us to different areas. So Jerusalem is various places based on where the vortexes are, based on where the dragon lines are. That's why you got Mazaka over here. You got the Kremlin. We got to dig more on that with the Byzantine, the Kremlin. You got the Russes and all that. There's different, you know what I'm saying, vortexes. So you got to guard the entire plane so we have our paradises or our judah cities or jerusalems or our places our safe places are all over this place as this grid is lining up all right you see the grid lining up you have a grid an ancient grid and you guard the vortexes of the whole thing not just one place but yeah we're just talking paradise bay and here it's called shambhala interesting right so you got this link, we dropped it before. This is the, the oceans, all right? Vosh got to reach out ocean. And then it goes deep, man, into, you know, how you get to this secret place. And that Shambhala, how to navigate. Here's the instructions to follow. Descent, 
from the point of descent with half ride a starboard slope at 10 degrees with the bow load angle of inclination 5 degrees distance 188 Whatever that is, preset, depth, 500. It doesn't seem like these motherfuckers playing. It doesn't seem like they're playing with you. Then starboard slope of 8 degrees until surface emerges in the grotto. Drive on the surface inside the grotto with the starboard slope of 8 degrees distance, 286 nautical miles. I believe that means. Six, six, dip, six difficult maneuver. Watch out. Descend with the bolo. Inclination of 45 degrees at a depth of 240 meters distance, 60. Whatever that is. Then with the port of two, all right, all right. Does it seem like they're making it up? So at this point, emergence, tail restraint, age of incidence, 45 degrees, always straight ahead until reaching the surface of Agartha, which they're calling your Paradise Bay or, you know, some secret entrance and, you know, through through the barrier like we got with the flat drop, like the uh, Japanese map and all the worlds beyond the pole. Beyond the pole, there's more worlds or more land. All right, drive to a car at the full speed. Look straight ahead until the new light is settled. What is this new light? Is it another sun? Is it another sun, sun? Until the new light. So yeah, I think there's more suns the further you go. Change of magnetic poles. That's why you get the Bermuda's Triangle, the uh, Dragon's Triangle. The movements of the compass needles and measurement instruments are negligible. So forget about your compass. Forget about your orientation. You in reality now. And then the crew member actually wrote back from this U-209. But he couldn't return. Because I guess that was the deal from going there. You can't come back. And there's a point of no return even on the Hyborian war map. So, dear old comrade, this message will be a surprise to you. The submarine 209 has it has done has done the earth has, is hollow. So they're saying there's crevices inside. There's more to these trees inside. Again, if your mother is the earth, where is her heart? If your mother is the entire connected plane, where is her heart? It's inside of her. The kingdom is within. So you've been taught this whole time, you know, in Christianity, all these other things. Oh, anything beneath you is hell. Well, where's the mother's heart? You don't think you're protected within your mother? Wait, this is your mother, right? You don't think you're protected within her? You know, I'm not saying start digging in caves and go crazy. And, you know, of course, your mother has been hijacked. Of course, they've made a harlot out of her. But when she's in prime season, please believe she protects you inside and out. Now you think it's, you know, I'll just live on the surface. I'll just live on the skin. I'll just live on the skin of the earth. Imagine just living on the skin of someone's body, right? So your your mother is Mother Earth, and she's more than skin. She has a heart, you know what I'm saying? And yes, there's more light. Now the whole team is doing well. This is a, this is a translation of someone that found this place, all right? The whole team is doing well, but she cannot return. We are not prisoners, all right? So we're not getting jammed up, but we can't return. <laughs> we're going to chill out because we found paradise, baby. I'm sure this message will reach you. It is the last link with the U-209. We'll meet again, comrades, so we out of here. I'm anxious for those who have to spend their lives on the surface of the earth. Wow. Since the Fuhrer has gone, so... I'm anxious for anyone who's still on the surface of the mother. I'm anxious. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous for anyone still on the surface of the mama when there's so much within it. You know what I mean? And that's what we have to open up to. Not just, oh, anything beneath my feet must be hell. You're saying anything inside your mother is hell. You know what I mean? That's just a viewpoint that's been inception. And, you know what I mean? So we get into it, man. But there's a lot more drive that go into you know, different craft and all this kind of stuff, that, you know, SS and all that. So, we're just talking what? Of course it's a dragon. Don't you know that dragons live in either Antarctica or near volcanoes? Don't you know that dragons live in either Antarctica or near volcanoes? This is a book called Scrolls of Armathos, The Haunted Forest. All right. It should belly flop into it. You got the link.
not no not the desolate icy desert of antarctica today no not the desolate icy desert of antarctica today right now you got a image in your head right but you've never been there so who do we trust with our images no not the desolate icy desert of antarctica today this was a beautiful, lush utopia of trees and rivers. Again, this is Scrolls of Armathos, The Haunted Forest by Liam B. Hirstel and Michael D. Ballard. We're just talking dragons in America. We're just talking dracons. And you need to get this if you want to understand your dragon king. We need to go to Antarctica. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We need to surf the wave. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not saying go get an expedition popping, but, you know, hey, I don't know. I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> no, man, not the desolate, icy desert of Antarctica today. This was a beautiful, lush utopia of trees and rivers and a full array of animals, including strangely wonderful lizards, birds, and creatures of old. No, this Antarctica was much different. In fact, this was a great kingdom forged from magic and stone. Known as Armathos, the first real civilization. Of course, they spoke with a much different language. And well, seeing as you do not, I will speak in English. Wow, so the bird then flies over an ancient city. It is then that the bird comes into full view. And you see it is a beautiful and quite large falcon or phoenix. We've been digging on the dragon and the phoenix lately. All right? It continues throughout or through the city as the professor continues still. The kingdom of Armathos has a fair and wise king. I thought we was getting away from... The priest king pressed the jaw. You thought we got away from it because we're talking Antarctica. Is that right? Even though we're looking right on this German map. And in Antarctica, on West Antarctica, that's you, right? West Antarctica is Shambhala. And they're calling it what? Paradise Bay, Shambhala, Paradise, Shambhala, Paradise, Paradise Bay. Okay, let's go. Let's go. And this is just the intro. About to have some goods, about to have some goods funds up in his man. Some goods and funds, man. The kingdom of Armathos has a fair and wise king with riches beyond compare. How many rich ass kings do we keep reading about? How many riches beyond compare were there? So you got to narrow this shit down at some point. His kingdom drew its breath from dragon's fire. No, no, no. Not the desolate icy desert of Antarctica you know today in your image. This was a beautiful, lush utopia of trees and rivers and a full array of animals. All right? Creatures of old. Ah, man, this was much different. In fact, it was a great kingdom forged with magic and stone, they say. His kingdom drew its breath from dragon's fire and thrived on the use of magic. We're talking Enoch. We're talking frequency, energy, vibration. Let's go. Of course, one can only use magic that is a remnant from the dragon's body. Whoa. Are we getting some dragon drop in our investigation of the priest king, King David? Of course, one can only use magic. Are we talking Solomon and the ring? The ring? The ring? Of course, one can only use magic that is remnant from the dragon's body. You see, magic is drawn 
from the universe or the creator, the ether, through the dragon's fangs. Wow. This was believed to be something that only the dragons could do, and it was a secret that was closely guarded by the dragon. So these knights knew this, that there's an energy in the dragon's fangs. The breath of dragon fire. We're talking smokeless fire. Of course, one can only use magic that is a remnant of the dragon's body. That's you got it got to be. That's that's why, man, all right? That's why you don't hear nothing about this. They, they're taking the magic. You see, magic is drawn from the universe of the dragon's fangs. This was believed to be something that only the dragons could do. and was a secret that was co closely guarded by the dragon. As the bird flies into a great palace, it lands on the outstretched arm of a great king. The scene changes again, and you see the class in the cave. All right, so then they... Start omitting pages. But that was just the intro to get into what's going on. You know what I mean? So I'm going to drop this. I'm just leading you to the water because I got to go. Because <laughs> we got to get into Operation High Jump. And I want to do a, a five minute. Actually, actually, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Make sure I got it up. Make sure I got this operation I jump right. Even though that hidden knowledge is, is pretty cool too. Right by. Alright. So let's get it right here. Five minutes. Who defeated the U.S. Navy in Antarctica? Then we're going to pick it up in our investigation of the Priest King. Remember the map drop. Antarctica. Shambhala. Remember the drop we did on Antarctica and how this all this dry land and how the, how the uh, Admiral Richard Byrd diary describes a lush land that he flew over the more he kept flying. All right, so, okay, okay, okay. We have more land beyond the pole. You seen the maps? Now dig on this. This is just, you know, a smidget of what your imagination can take you to. There's dry land, not just ice and stuff. You keep on going, you find more land, more water, more ice, more land, more water, more ice. Love to Giannini who told you that in Worlds Beyond the Poles. And love to my bro, Frank Bergman, or excuse me, Fred Bergman. My bro, I keep Fred Bergman, who actually sent me a copy of Worlds Beyond the Poles. And the City's a Gold DVD complete set. We about to get that Aqua Core next, man. We about to do it for my brother Fred. So let's get it. Antarctica. Hello and welcome. In my video on NASA Flat Earth Cover Up Part 1, I briefly touched on Operation High Jump. In the invasion of Antarctica had been defeated within six months in February 1947, for reasons never fully explained. 
Today I would like to get a little deeper into the aspects of this failed invasion of Antarctica and the defeat of the U.S. Navy which led to the Antarctic failed invasion Antarctic Treaty. So this failed invasion of Antarctica failed invasion. Who were they invading and why did they get their ass kicked? Whoever it was, they deserved to get their ass kicked because they were invading. Just like here. But they tried to do it there. Now, of course, you got the Nazi Hitler thing. Where's Hitler hiding? And that might just be a cover up for what really, really, really went down. Because it seems like they're hiding dragons. And the defeat of the U.S. Navy, which led to the Antarctic Treaty. The defeat of the U.S. Navy, which led to the Antarctic Treaty. You got the link, pull it up. The Antarctic Treaty was signed in Washington on the 1st of December, 1959, by the 12 countries whose scientists have been active in and around Antarctica during the International Geophysical Year of 1957 and 1958. It entered into force 1961 and has since been acceded to by many other nations, Confederacy. The total number of parties to the treaty is now 53. Started with 12, now 53. But they're at war with each other. But they have a treaty. But they're at war with each other. But they have a treaty to guard this dragon stuff. Antarctica shall be used for peaceful purposes. For them, what's peace? What's peace? It depends on perspective. Man. You got all these countries, all right? So you dig on it. Antarctic Treaty got popping, what they say, in 59. This is popping in the 40s. So they got together finally 10 years later and said, look, man, we need to work together to guard this secret. We need to work together to guard this secret. The invasion of Antarctica had been defeated within six months in February 1947. For reasons never fully explained. Today I would like to get a little deeper into the aspects of this failed invasion of Antarctica and the defeat of the US Navy which led to the Antarctic Treaty. Hmm. И вдруг происходит нечто необъяснимое. Экспедиция, рассчитанная на полгода, уже через два месяца спешно сворачивается и покидает берега Антарктиды. Начало 1947 года. Очередная экспедиция легендарного американского полярника Ричарда Берда подошла к берегам Антарктиды. Очень странная экспедиция. В отличие от первых трех, она полностью финансируется военно-морскими силами США и имеет военное название Операция Хай Джамп Высокий прыжок. Подчинение адмирала Берда. Мощная военно-морская группировка, авианосец, 12 надводных кораблей, подводная лодка, более двух десятков самолетов и вертолетов, около пяти тысяч. And five thousand motherfucking people, man. In the 40s, you took five thousand people to Antarctica? Now open your mind, because you don't know shit. And I don't know shit. But can we dig on shit? And can we dig on it? Together, of course. 5,000 people in the 40s. That's massive invasion. And they lost? And no one's talking about it? That's like the bully getting his ass kicked. But nobody want to talk about it. Because they don't want to get their ass kicked by the bully. But the bully got, got, got smirked. You know what I'm saying? The bully got molly whopped. Got dusted off. Got bing bong. Got wing wham. Got knocked the fuck out. Man. 5,000 people roll up on Antarctica and got smurdered. You think it's play play? 
What did they find? Because they're not talking about it. What is this credible gentleman saying about the situation? Under the command. Now this is Captain First Rank, Doctor of History something something. I don't know. All right, so under the command of Admiral R. Burr, Richard Burr, there was a powerful military squadron, just like Columbus, just like Columbus. Bird is there, Columbus, that furthered other expeditions to invade more indigenous lands and people. And this dude brought an air aircraft carrier to Antarctica. 12 surface ships. One submarine. More than 20 airplanes and helicopters. And 5,000 people on staff. I think you'll agree. A strange team for a scientific expedition. Ain't that the truth? December 2nd, 1946. Before the start of his expedition, Admiral Byrd at the press conference said, Listen, he's saying it out of his own mouth what this is about. The dude is on the podium. Literally saying my expedition is military in nature. We are invading a group of people or something. Uh, it's military. We're taking all we got. <laughs> and look what happened. No further detail. At the end of January 1947, full scale aerial reconnaissance. Again, surveying the Antarctic region of Queen Maud. That might be a great place for you to survey. It all went to plan in the first weeks. Tens of thousands of photos were taken. Really? Suddenly, the inexplicable happened. Uh oh. The next six months, the six months ex expedition terminated after only two months. So they did all, you know, I mean, 5,000 people, they put a lot into that. It was supposed to be a six month invasion, and they was out of there in two months. Fleeing the Antarctica coast, it was a real fast retreat. They lost a destroyer. Remember the submarine that came over? That one submarine? Look at it. I want you to take this in. Who sunk their submarine in the 40s? You know your dragon's been rocking. I mean, you know your dragon's been rocking. So, who sunk their battleship? Almost half of the carrier base, almost half their carrier base aircraft. Dozens of sailors and of officers. Look, man, Bobby Smurder, man. This ain't no play play. Now they went over there picking a fight. Hijack city. Nobody messing with you. You picking a fight. This ain't play play people. What happened? I'm asking you. To commission investigation members of the U.S. Congress Admiralty Burr, said the following. In the event of another war, America could be attacked by an army that has the ability to fly from pole to pole. Focus on me. 
This is the most esteemed, credible admiral in military history, man. When he says he's on a military, you know, mission, he's on a military mission. We know this Hitler thing is looking more and more like a cover-up in many ways. So, what happened? Apparently, I got my ass whooped by an enemy that has the ability to fly from pole to pole with incredible speed. I can't make this shit up, man. You got to take that leap and dig on it. An enemy that has the ability to fly from pole to pole. We're just talking Preston John. I promise you that. Just talking Preston John. Because we're talking dragons. A hi to the family, Sister Ty, Larissa, Miss D in the copper color, awakening, Chef Candy's been dropping his drop. Our quads been dropping drop, man. Jackie Anthony. Man, I'm talking that drop, drop chatter, chat, 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 chatter. If you ain't been tuned in, Monday through Friday, from 10 p until <laughs> 10 p 10 to 2. 10 to 2, but yeah, we we go later than that, but uh, yeah, man, we, this is, man, we, we been, you know, this is a normal dig for us, so by the time I get a chance to do it here, you know what I'm saying, I'm sharing, I'm sharing with you what we've been digging on all week long, you know what I mean, so I have, I'm sharing their links, I'm putting it all in the series, it's like that, Drop Nation, Frost Dragon, because somebody got their ass kicked, by an enemy that has the ability to fly from pole to pole with incredible speed. I can't make this shit up. Frost Dragon. Frost Dragon. Frost Dragon. Frost Dragon. These are the drawings of the Frost Dragon. These drawings show that changes, the changes that take place to some male Frost Dragons during the migrating season. First a male in early spring below the same dragon with the fur like feathers. Feathered serpent. Hmm. That grow in the summer months. Fur. Summer. Wow. We're just talking frosty here. Free Phoenix. Free Phoenix. Free Phoenix. We're just talking the frost dragon, right? Frost dragon. What can you do, Frost Dragon? Habitat. The chief habitats habitats of the Frost Dragon. Listen up. The chief habitats of the Frost Dragon are the ice-bound regions that surround both the North and South Poles. We got our ass whooped by an enemy that has the ability to fly from pole to pole with incredible speed. Chief habitats of the frost dragon are the ice bound regions that surround both the north and south poles, lovers of the cold. Frost migrate south or migrate thousands. Listen, these frost dragons migrate thousands of miles each year to ensure that they spend most of their lives in winter darkness. Their lair, Arctic Iceberg, provides an ideal location for the frost dragon to build its lair, Arctic, Antarctic, Arctic. Because many icebergs drift southward, the dragon finds it has less distance to fly when the migrating season begins and it must depart for the Antarctic. Pole to pole. Let me go into the venom and forms of attack. Okay. All right. We're just talking frosty here, right? Love the chef candy, man. She did. <laughs> she started digging on Antarctic dragons. It dropped this on me, man. Wifey is good to go. Wifey is good to go. She's <laughs> in it to win it, man. <laughs> Non stop research, and she just had a headache and went to sleep, man, because she was digging on frost dragons, man. So, love to Chef Candy. 
Frost Dragon Annual. Listen. Arctic to Antarctic Migrators. Arctic to Antarctic Migrators. Arctic to Antarctic Migrators. Frost Dragons fly thousands of miles each year to ensure that they spend the greater part of the year in their favored, favored dark winter climates hunting for food. Pole to pole. An enemy that has the ability to fly from pole to pole with incredible speed. The number of ships, planes and men that made up Operation High Jump has never been disputed. So what caused the U.S. Navy to abandon this massive operation so suddenly and leave completely defeated? fully aware that to bring in reinforcement troops would be futile. Hmm. No reinforcements, no need for that. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. We're just talking about Antarctic, we're just talking about the Frost Dragon. It seems that they didn't want anybody else to find out what they encountered out there and had to retreat from, so they put the whole place on lockdown. The whole place. One more time. It seems that they didn't want anybody else to find out what they encountered out there and had to retreat from, so they put the whole place on lockdown. Lockdown. As no further information is forthcoming, we can't even get an answer to little mysteries as to who cut this ice so perfectly, how they did it, or for what purpose. Look at how perfectly this ice is cut. Look at these long ledges, these walls perfectly cut in Antarctica. Is it play play? <laughs> Look at this man. Look at it, man. Look at it, man. Look at it, man. Look at it, man. Huh? Is that natural? winter of 1982, a 12-man research team at a remote Antarctic United States research station discovered an alien life form that was buried in the snow and ice. For discovered a alien life form buried in the snow, but they're not going to tell you shit because you see, this is the end of the video. They don't tell you nothing else. They leave you with that. They leave you with that, man. Listen up. Remote Antarctic United States Research Station discover an alien life form that was buried in the snow and ice for over 100,000 years. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You know all the dates, don't you? One more time. Winter of 1982, a 12-man research team at a remote Antarctic United States research station discovered an alien life form that was buried in the snow and ice for over 100,000 years. Okay, so that was the five-minute crash course. That was the five-minute crash course. Who defeated the U.S. Navy in Antarctica? We got to learn about the Antarctic Treaty, 1959, now 53 nations, they're guarding the entire parameter of this ice wall. Get your orientation, let's go. Oh yeah, we're just talking frosty, 
flies thousands of miles, pole to pole, Arctic to Antarctic. Now this is when it gets so much fun. Much of how to the fact. <laughs> much of how just drop nation, you're incredible, man. You know what I mean? Drop nation, you're incredible. Let's just keep let's go. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Drop nation, you are incredible. And this was dropped specifically by uh, Jackie Anthony, so much of how my family. What is the difference between Wakanda vibranium and the Antarctic vibranium? There's two different vibrations. There's two different vi vibraniums. I mean, on one end, you have an Antarctic. Where's my map drop? You have an Antarctica with a Shabala or a paradise, right? There's a paradise vibration going on somewhere. They're getting their ass kicked by somebody. Wakandan vibranium is the classic Marvel vibranium. So this is in the comic books. You're about to get real. I told you, you got to see it through the eyes of a little child that absorbs kinetic energy it absorbs right so this wakandan vibranium what they're calling wakandan vibranium absorbs vibratory or kinetic energy it absorbs it all right the apparent obs obs observable vibratory rate of the molecules of the vibranium itself does not noticeably increase when the vibranium absorbs mechanical energy the outside vib vibratory energy is stored within the bonds between the molecules be making up the vibranium. As a result, a chunk of vibranium which had absorbed a considerable amount of vibratory energy would be ex exceedingly hard to demolish. If enough force were applied to this chunk to smash it, the, the vibranium would explode, releasing much of the absorbed energy. There are limits to the capacity of vibranium to absorb vibratory energy. Although the exact extent of these limits has not been determined. They don't know shit. Then you got the Antarctic vibranium. It's described as an anti-metal. Oh. It's anti-metal. Anti-metal. Well, shit. Wouldn't you be anti-metal? We're not just talking about gold and minerals we're talking about metal we're talking about look at around you got a metal a robotic world right it's, it's getting more metal it's getting more bio you know polar bio power bio and bioengineering right metal 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 aluminum barium dumped in chemtrails metal anti-metal is what you are which has the opposite property causing vibrations which Weaken the atomic and molecular bonds of other metals. So it starts breaking down metals. Antarctic vibranium has thus far been found in nature only in the isolated region of Antarctica. Why do they keep going down there? What are they really trying to get? What's Avatar all about? What's, the, what's this vibranium? Vibrant, vibration is all we're talking about. Energy, frequency, vibration. This is Pressure John number 32. And we're talking Antarctic vibranium, man. Dig on it or get left on. We're talking anti-metal in Pressure John 32. Yes, we are. We have to go there. Foundation. Antarctic vibranium has thus far been found in nature only in the isolated region of Antarctica. Shambhala, known as the Savage Land, ringing a bell. It is also known as the anti-metal due to its opposite effects to Wakandan vibranium. Antarctic vibranium through a means that is not understood, just like Quicksilver, man. I wonder what Antarctic vibranium has to do with Quicksilver. Because they're both mysterious and unknown. Every time they say unknown, they're talking about you. Every time they say unknown, they're talking Prester John. 
We got to get it down to the Antarctic vibranium to talk Preston John in part 32. We need to vibrate. We need that vibranium in your cranium. Through a means that is not understood, emanates vibration. So what they're calling Wakanda vibranium, all right, absorbs vibratory or kinetic energy in its vicinity within itself. It sucks it in, right? So you got those energy vampires around you every day sucking your energy, right? Antarctic vibranium, what they're calling Antarctic vibranium, all right? Only found in Antarctica. Known as anti-metal, has the opposite effects of what they're calling Wakandan vibranium. Antarctic vibranium, through a means that is not understood, emanates vibrations, which cause the atomic and molecular bonds and nearby metals of other kinds to weaken, which results in the liqui liquefaction of nearby solid metals. It liquefies all metals. Wow. Okay. We're just talking vibranium. Love the Tyrone Street. Because I want to dig on this Wakanda. You want to know why we're talking vibranium, Wakandian vibranium, Antarctic vibranium. So, you know, even when they're putting the Wakanda on it, they're hijacking it because there's something very righteous about this Waka, this Waka. We're just talking about Waka Flocka, right? Waka Flocka, right? You don't think he got the drop when we're talking Wakandan vibranium? But what's the drop on the Wakanda? Let's get to the root of it so we know, you know what I'm saying? There's some substance in this. And this is love to Tyrone Street, man. Fair use, fair use. This is all for fair use, educational purposes. Let's get it. Tell me something. So already, 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 something's going on, right? So I'm going to play. Let me skip ahead a little bit because it's going to break down the definition, the significance of Wakanda. That's what I want. Yeah, all right. So you got this movie coming out, man. All right. We're just talking Wakanda. We're just talking Wakanda. The Black Panther, let's get it from here, of South America. Now, you've seen this Black Panther, man, and the Avengers, you know, old boy played this cat dude, and the Avengers, remember that? All right. Now, let's break down the Wakada. Already, you see the Wa. So we know we're talking our creator and they're breaking it down, you know, and, and manifesting it, how they're doing it and what they're translating here. But Wakanda, Wakada, Wakada, Dabawa, Shabata, Wakada. Translated. Let's go. I left the Tyrone Street because this is super dope. It was partly through pioneer study of the Suis Suyan Indians that the popular fallacy concerning the Aboriginal Great Spirit gained currency, and it was partly through the work of Dorsey among the Segaha, Segiha, and the Coda, remember the Coda literally means dragon tribes. First as a missionary and afterwards as a linguist, that the early era was corrected. Among these tribes, the creation and control of the world and the things thereof are ascribed to Wa Ka Da. The term varying somewhat from tribe to tribe, so it varied. It wasn't one thing. All right, so you can get the babies out. You can one tribe manifested. The creator, you know, in their language this way or that way, but it was variations. Just as among the Algonquin tribes, uh, omnipotence was assigned to Manido or Manito, the mighty of Hiawatha. So he's the mighty of Hiawatha. 
He's saying he's the power of Hiawatha. He's the God of Hiawatha, right? The mighty of Hiawatha is the power of Hiawatha. We're just talking our Hawa because Hiawatha is drop the eye. You know what I'm saying? Hiawatha, Hawata. And that is a contemporary of Abraham, according to the OSB. Remember, so, you know, they said this Hiawata is the chief of this, of these, uh, you know, Indian tribes. They call them Indian, you know, whatever tribe, copper color tribe. Hawata, and he was contemporaneous with Abraham. Meaning he lived at the same dang time as Abraham. Here. So the power behind this Abraham here or Hawata here is what they're calling the mighty this Wa Ka Da. Yet inquiry shows that Wa Ka Da assumes various forms, all right, and in is rather a quality than a definite entity. It's a quality, it's an energy than one person. It's not just one person we're saying, it's an quality. Remember, the Holy Grail is a function of priest king thus among many of the tribes the sun is wakada not the wakada or a wakanda but simply waka wakada right? and among the same tribes the moon is the wakada so obviously either you know what i'm saying they're considering all things the creator all in all together or they're you know you're talking about cats that are specifically saying well i'll give the power to the moon or power to the sun but i believe what they're saying is that they were considering the sun the moon the thunder the lightning the stars the winds the cedar and very you know what i'm saying all these things encompass the greatness even a man especially a a shaman might be a wakada or wakada all right beautiful Tyrone Street got the drop. As used by the Suian Indians, Wakada vaguely connotes also power so we're just talking your power sacred power ancient power grandeur animate immortal in other words yet does not express with any degree of fullness and clearness the ideas conveyed by these terms singly or collectively indeed no english sentence we're talking to spell and being spell breakers no English sentence of reasonable length can do justice. No English sentence of reasonable length can do justice to the aboriginal idea or the original idea of original man expressed by term Wakada. No English sentence of reasonable length can do justice to the aboriginal idea expressed by the term wakada interesting let's get it all right you see this comic strip we're talking about the black panther right there's a movie that's gonna be called coming out uh called wakada or wakanda so look at the movie trailer look at the movie trailer you see the same character that was in avengers avengers you know what i'm saying the iron man joint i mean so it was the brother that was in that little batman cat suit that was like a i was like what is that that's the wakada it's the first batman it's the original batman really wakada i can't read it too small but you see the wakada all over the place so there's we well, you know we gotta get it through the eyes of a little child. Let go. So 
Some of the mystery places were especially distinctive and noteworthy. Foremost among them was the sacred pipestone quarry near Big Sioux River, whence the material for the Wakada Kulumat was obtained. Another was the fair fame Menewaka. Waka, 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 Flaka. <laughs> you don't think he has the drop? Of North Dakota, not innately translated Devil's Lake. Okay. A third was the Mystery Rock or Medicine Rock. Waka, Waka, Medicine Rock of the Mandane in Hidatsa near Yellowstone River. What did we just get on Yellowstone about? And why is it connected to the mystery rock and the medicine rock of Waka Wa? About all of these places, picturesque legends. Picturesque. Oh, we're just talking Mount Rama. We're just talking Yellowstone. Picturesque. And myths clustered. Myths. Preston John. Who is Preston John? I get it. I mean, I thought you wanted to overstand, Priest King Preston John. So they got the Wakandan vib Vibranium. Remember, that's the one that absorbs, right? The Wakandan Vibranium absorbs vibratory energy, what they're calling it. The Antarctic Vibranium does what emanates vibration so it gives energy so this one absorbs and this one that absorbs is being linked right to so-called Africa something absorbing energy over there so it crashed in a place called Wakanda in Africa <laughs> All right, so there's a spot called Wakada in Africa. This ain't play play. We're talking Antarctica. We're talking Africa. We're talking the whole board when you talk Priest King Preston John. Wakada, all right, unearthed a generation before the events present day. One of the tribes led by Bishinga, its mightiest warriors, decided to investigate, believing it to be a gift from their gods. Their gods gave them something that absorbs energy. Interesting. The mythic creatures are shaped in the image of the indigenous animals and birds. The myth centered in, in the local rocks and waters. The mysterious thearchy corresponds with the tribal hierarchy, and the attributes is, and the attributes ascribed to the deities are those characteristics of warriors and hunters. <laughs> We're just talking about Wakanda, and this is the original Wakanda. The original Batman. Fair use educational purposes. Do you see the locks? Do you see the locks? Do you see these indigenous bands? So you go look up the trailer for Wakanda and you're gonna see the same brother that was in Avengers playing him. This is an indigenous brother. We're talking about the Black Panther. When they called themselves Black Panthers, they were saying, and psh, we're part of this indigenous heritage of warriors. Captain America's rolling up on the heritage and getting smiley whopped as usual then he got surrounded and what does the brother say what does the brother do fall back jack i got this and they fall back who is prester john you don't think we talking con you don't think we talking con But he still want that smoke. He still want that smoke. Uh-oh. He 
I want that smoke, man. Oh, no. You want to think about it. Think about it. All right, we done thinking about it. Hijack Slayer. Ball game. Ball game, Hijack Slayer. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Come on, man. What it do? What it do? Ah, 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 Choco, Choco, go to sleep. All right, man, you wanna play play? You wanna play play? Let play play. Let play play. Back kick. Let go. Let go, let go, let go. Ball game. Ball game, Jack. Yeah, man. Tyrone Street, man. Tyrone Street, man. All right, again, man. Fair use and they caboose. You already know. You know, you gotta do this, man. Just, you know. Uh, Alright, fair use disclaimer, copyright, you know what I mean? You get it? Educational purposes. This video and our YouTube channel is generally may contain certain copyright works that were not specifically authorized to be used by the copyright holders, but which we believe in good faith are protected by federal law and the fair use doctrine for one or more of the reasons noted above. Criticism, comment, News reporting teaching. Alright, we're just doing some teachings and stuff. Don't mind us. Fair use in your caboose bone. Alright, let's go. Tyrone Street got the drop. We're just talking with Kada. So I said that kind of sound Hebrew. So they took me to the Aramaic and the Carnegie Institute, Institution of Washington Publication, issue 134. You got the drop below. They took me to the Aramaic, or excuse me, the Ar the Arabic. Wakada to burn. Oh, we're talking burning again. Fire, huh? Back to fire. To burn, to be kindled. We're talking fire, drakan, right? Then they got a Hebrew, Yakad. We know the wise can be hijacked at times. Remember A E I O U and sometimes why? It's tricky. Just like the Yah was originally the Wa. So you put the Y back on it and you still got the Y card, the Y card, the Y card, Y card. All right, here we go. And that's in the Carnegie Institution of Washington. And wifey found this, man, again, Chef Candy got the job because you said, what does this got to do with Preston John? Ong Khan, Wong Khan, Black Dragon. We only talking to Black Panther, right? Black Dragon. This is out the, you know, Marvel comic, whatever, the same thing. All right. So we got Ching Chang, Chin Tang, Extra Dimensional, Kulung Dragon, Warrior Class, Dragons of the Kulan, Formerly Nightshade, <laughs> Enemies, Black Panther T'Challa, Chala, Defenders, Doctor Strange. All right, so that's who this Chang is. His enemy is the Black Panther. So he's a, you'll learn he's a dragon slayer. But let's go. Power, abilities, Chang Tang in his natural form is an immersed dragon, 1,000 feet long. He possesses class 100 strength and durability. All right, hold on, let me back it up. So is this this enemy of this chain tang, this hijack here, his enemies are Black Panther and who? Master Khan. Master Khan? Master Khan. Human magic user, real name Khan. Man, we're just talking to Black Panther, right? 
We're just talking the Black Panther to burn. We're talking Wakada, right? Right? We're just talking the comic book, right? Master Khan. No problem. Somebody else named Kumbalu Bay. All right. <laughs> it's all kinds of stuff. affiliations worshipped by people of Kulan. Then they got the Bays. The L's and Bays worshipping. Worshipping this thing. Okay. We're just talking to this Master Khan. So this Master Khan has affiliations worshipped by people of Kulan. So these Bays, these L's. So, all right. So is this, which Khan is this? We all trying to pick, you know, all right, let's figure it out. Enemies of Princess Azir, Chiang, Chiang Chiang. All right, which side is he on? Let's get back. I just want you to know you're talking about the cons. Either you're talking Genghis Khan or you're talking Preston John. Now you know we're talking Khan. And there's also a Ross here and a Luke Cage, just like the TV series Luke Cage. That's another so-called black superhero. And now we're just talking the black dragon. So something's being unveiled. Then you have three years later, the dragon king's daughter decided that her uncle had suffered enough. So we're talking the dragon Khan. Chang's Tang's niece pleaded with Master Khan to release Chen Tang, but he refused to listen. After the mournful dragon king refused to assist him, they in they instead located the Dragon Slayer and used it to return to the surface. <laughs> you take this as play play. All right, man, you got the link, man. Wifey got the drop. Wifey got the drop. Now, you remember this drop we got into a little bit? I think we got time. Let's see. Yeah, we might got a little time. Yeah, man, I want to just belly flop right quick into around the... What kind of devil were you? We're down to the wire. They'll be moving the body out any minute, and I'll have to leave with it. Now, this is supposed to be a fantasy-based, you know, thing. A fantasy made real, but they're really putting the real spill, if you know what I mean. All right. And we're going to get a couple minutes of this, because we got more than that. Let me skip ahead a little bit. Skip ahead a little bit. Even though I want to get more. So good, so good. Guess we can start here. Let's start here. Get a couple minutes, man. Event. We're just talking in Antarctica. I think this this particular one takes place in Romania. We're talking the cold, frost-like places. The knights weren't killed by our dragon. They were killed by an adult, perhaps defending its young. And a dragon corpse can tell us how their bodies worked, but a nest. It could tell us so much more how they lived. My guess, up in those mountains, we'll find evidence for a dragon family. Tana is about to unravel a medieval tragedy. It is the 15th century, and a mountain dragon is under threat. Distant ancestors of this female mountain dragon fed on the wild herds that roamed the vast Asian grasslands. But the herds were tamed by man. For dragons, they were no longer fair game. They were livestock. And so the dragons that gorged themselves on the plains have been driven to the remote regions of Europe. And in this remote place, wild game is scarce. It is part of you. Carpathian Mountains, 1475. I don't want to let that slide by you when we're talking dates and chronology. I mean, when did they roll up on you? So your dragons were in play, Negro. When they got you, when they rolled up on you, they rolled up on you and your dragons. But they were given dragons by your enemy. 
and it was an aerial war. It was all kinds of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this thing was, this thing took place on many levels, man. We're talking a frequency war. So, oh, it's a fantasy made real. We're talking Carpathian Mountains, 1475. The distant ancestors of this female mountain dragon fed on the wild herds that roamed the vast Asian grasslands. But the herds were tamed by man. For dragons, they were no longer fair game. They were livestock. And so the dragons that gorged themselves on the plains had been driven to the remote regions of Europe. And in this remote place, wild game is scarce. So once they became livestock, the dragon said, oh, okay, so I guess they need them now. So I won't mess with them. So it drove them to get their wild game somewhere else. Because it wouldn't take the livestock or that which was domesticated already, man. This is high vibration shit. Today she is hunting the rarest creature on earth. But not to eat. Today, she's looking for a mate. She spreads her scent throughout her territory. Strong winds carry the pheromones south. Female dragons mate once every seven years, yet this mature female has never seen a male dragon. Nevertheless, every year when she comes into season, instinct commands her to play out the rituals of attraction. Her season is almost finished, and the window will close for another year. Another change of plan. Something interesting about a half mile below the cave. snow has revealed unusual features on the rock. But to the casual observer, they could be anything, perhaps the result of some odd geological process. But me, I've got fire on my mind. And these rocks look like they've been scorched. Just like the rocks in Utah or Zion Park, I mean, you see all these scorched you know what I mean? These are battlegrounds, man, and they're always a direct fire. You're damn near talking about lasers when you're talking a smokeless fire. You're damn near talking about Eliezer, 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 when you're talking Dracon fire. No, no, don't worry about samples. I need you to follow this line and look for more burn marks. And tread carefully, watch for hidden crevasses. Okay, approximately two hours due south. We drop off point, heading towards the scene of death. Can you take a GPS reference? Okay. Evidence of discoloration of the rock. Seems to have been subjected to a blast of intense heat. It's literally scarred the rock. These rocks have been burned to melting point in symmetrical lines. The dimensions are frightening. Lightning couldn't do this. Forest fire? It's not likely. We're halfway up a mountain at the edge of a glacier. The lair is nearby. Was there some kind of fight?
female returns to her den, a network of caves melted into dense glacial ice. Despite the cold temperatures outside, in here the temperature is relatively warm. Like an igloo, the thick walls retain heat. But the mountain dragon has another line of defense against the cold. From her marine ancestor, she's inherited a blood protein that prevents her tissues from freezing. It has proved vital to her species as they are forced into increasingly inhospitable habitats. Soon it will be autumn and her metabolism will slow as she prepares to hibernate through the bitter winter. All right, so pretty soon you're just going to have to ask yourself, is it play play? Do you think they're just doing a fantasy role play or are they really just trying to give as much drop as they can as, you know, with, with as much space as they can? You know what I'm saying? Just put it all out there. We're talking the 14th century, 15th century. They're talking about dragons at 1475 in the Carpathian Mountains. We're just talking about, we're just talking about Georgia and Rus and Russia. Roma, Romania, Roma, Romani, India, Indias, Roma, the Kingdom of Georgia, also known as the Georgian Empire, was a medieval monarchy which emerged circa 1008. It reached its golden age. We're talking the 11th century of political and economic strength during the reign of King David the Fourth. What? Of course, they want you to believe that this is something else. You're not connected to it because in your timeline, what do you mean? I said, Negro, they added a thousand years. What do you think they did with it? Created false history. What really happened? They just rolled up on you. Your 70 AD, you think happened with Titan and Vespasian and all that, happened recently, fool. I say fool because we've been fooled like fools, man. We've been fooled. They've added over a thousand years. You think 70 AD is 70 AD. It's really 1070 or 1170. They call it the dark ages. Medieval, right? Medieval. That triggers something in you psychologically to turn it off. That's a trigger. Turn it off. It's medieval. Dark Ages, medieval. And then they do their Roman Empire. It's supposed to be so great and true and real. They just invaded you. That's the invasion. That's the Roman invasion. Which emerged circa 1080, 10, 10,008 AD. It reaches golden age or political or economic strength during the reign of King David. Who was Prester John. And Queen Tamar the Great. We're going to do a whole thing on Tamar because, you know, they're trying to marry in to Tamar's bloodline to claim to be Israelites through the bloodline of Queen Tamar. So she's a major, major sister on the board from the 11th to 13th centuries. We're talking the Khans. We're talking King David. He's King David IV. What do we get on the genie page? The genie page. Raja Haraja Chola II, Jadaran, Emperor of Soli, Soliman, Prester John, the Pandian, Pan, right? Who is the husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon, right? We're talking the Babylonian Exilarch. Father of Solomon I and the Israelite king of Telmas, the Israelite king of Telmas, Hanan. He's the father of Solomon, Hanan, and Exilar David the Sixth. So if he's the father of Exilar David the Sixth, of what? Georgia, Babylon, and Georgia, right? Get our, let's get our flow for the dismount, man. So we're talking Exilarch David the Sixth. 
Babylon. These are the exilarchs during the Babylonian captivity. Georgia. Georgia. And I say, where's the real Georgia? Because it seems like the real one might be right here in Georgia in America. Let's blend it all together now. Let's put it all together. We're just talking to Cherokee, right? Man, get to the drop. Get the drop, because it's dropping. Get the drop live on the radio. We live Monday through Friday.